Hello, and welcome to today's Waste Hero lesson. What is recycling and how to do it? In this lesson, we're gonna go over some proper recycling tips and how to do it in a general fashion. We're gonna break recycling down to three steps, but please note there might be some vari uh, variance in what you need to do depending on your specific country and your specific region. So first, you need to identify what can you recycle. The most common and most widely recycled materials are cardboard, paper, glass, type one, PET plastics, and metal. Again, more of these items can be recyclable, but it depends on where you are. Often, plastic bags, toys, mixed materials like a light bulb or juice box. So things that are glass and metal for a light bulb, paper and plastic for a juice box are often difficult to recycle. Garden hoses, pencils, wood-like materials, those can't be recycled. Now, Again, once we've identified these common materials, know what you can recycle. This might change from where you are. You need to identify, hey, can I recycle glass where I am? Can I recycle plastic, cardboard, or metal? What can be recycled? Some places allow um, for more recycling. There may, when I live in the country of Finland, for example, there was bins for compost that was recyclable with public utilities. Not every country has that. That would include dirty napkins, so things that are paper but are contaminated, just like a greasy pizza box. Those can't normally be recycled. They might be eligible for composting in your area. Additionally, some places have collection boxes for materials like toys, used clothes, shoes, batteries, things that can be recycled and disposed of but require more specialization. You need to know and look into where those might be available for you locally, and that availability depends on region. Next, um, again, when you're identifying plastics to recycle, often these will have the labeling, uh, as we can see right here, the type one plastic is there, that's our PET, the most commonly recycled plastics. Depending on your region, more materials like type two and type five plastic might also be recycled. Maybe even more, but as we extend to other no kinds of plastic, those tend to be much less uh, commonly recycled. They can be, but most places don't have the facilities to do so. So again, when we're identifying what can be recycled, it's also important to know that sometimes materials that we normally can be recycled can't be unless they're cleaned or properly prepared. So again, if we don't properly prepare plastic or other things to recycle, it's going to be wet and dirty. It can contaminate the bin and it's going to take something that can be recycled and turn it into waste because if something's contaminated, they cannot take it at the recycling center. Similarly, thin materials um, like our plastic bags or very, very small materials often don't qualify for recycling due to the difficulty of processing them. So to prevent those recyclable materials from becoming waste, the first step is to clean and do some light drying before recycling. They don't need to be bone dry, but they should have just minor amounts of water. In. And if there is any little bit of water left inside, it's best to leave the cap off so they can, can dry a little bit more while in the bins and moving to recycling plants. Very important to clean thoroughly. And as you can also see in these images, remove that cap in the wrapping around the water bottle. Some places can take it with those materials still on it, but those mixed materials need to be separated before re proper recycling happens. A couple tips for this cleaning stage again, like I ju just mentioned, to separate those combined materials, to separate your wrapper and the cap, those different kinds of plastics, to make sure there's a minimum amount of water in there. Can't be anything too small. Uh, it'll be too likely to fall out of machine processing for recycling. Nothing too thin and too fragile, for plastics at least. And then when you're recycling, check if your container smells, that's often a sign that something is in there contaminating the recycling materials and that these are going to become unusable. So they're going to turn from recyclable to landfill. They're going to become from usable to waste. And again, when we're identifying what can and can't be recycled, but cardboard with grease on it, it cannot be recycled properly, and there's not really a way to clean that grease off. So these would be waste products. They're, they're compostable, depending on what area you are. If something, if a bottle's too far dirty, they will not accept, or in many places, if they're sealed. If you're a recycling plant worker, you don't want to take the risk of opening an unknown bottle containing unknown substances. It's too high of a risk for most places. Anything with food still left in it, whether it's a jar or a metal can, those cannot be recycled. Again, part of the cleaning process is to remove those products. Sometimes they might need to soak a little bit first, like if I clean a peanut butter jar to get all that peanut butter out, but it can be cleaned. And again, not 
bottles with any, like more than that teaspoon of liquid in there, just because the potential health hazards. They don't know what's in that bottle. It might be a water bottle, might look like water in there, but they don't know and people aren't going to take that risk to recycle it. So do your part to make sure it stays recyclable and doesn't become waste. And step three, putting them in the correct bin. It depends where you are. I'd love to show you every kind of recycling bin, but it varies a lot country to country and region to region. You might just have one general recycling bin. You might have one just for plastic. You might have one for type 1 plastic and type 2 plastic. One might just be for aluminum and one might be for tin can. Depending on where you are, they have different bins and different sorting. You need to do your due diligence to find out what bins do I need to put these materials in so they can be properly recycled. Because these materials can be used again and again, and we want to get that value out of recycling. So identify the recycling logo, identify what materials can go in there, clean them properly, and get them in the bin. Again, if every year, perfectly fine recyclable material ends up in landfill. It ends up in landfills, A, because they haven't been disposed of properly, like I put plastic in a glass bin. They end up in landfills because they haven't been properly cleaned. So again, I didn't clean this a peanut butter jar, and now that peanut butter jar, instead of being recycled, is going to go to landfill. And they might also end up in a landfill because it was near other contaminated things. Maybe that peanut butter jar smeared peanut butter on the perfectly clean jar next to it. Every year, tons and tons of recyclable waste ends up in landfills due to incorrect sorting and incorrect preparation. So lack of cleaning, lack of processing before. If we do those steps, we generate so much value for this planet and for this earth. If you liked today's lesson, you can learn more at wasteheroeducation.com. We have plenty of information about recycling, circular economies, and how you can help out the environment through waste management. So become a waste hero. Visit us at wasteheroeducation.com.